Howdy folks, Kirk and Jay here with Kirk Giordano Plastering. Last week we did a video and we promised you something a little bit different. This is it, this is the difference. Um, the fellas at Graco, my buddy Danny, he called me and says, Kirk, how would you guys like to review and use one of our plaster pumps? And I sort of politely declined and said, man, I've, I've used those and I'm not real thrilled with them. In fact, 20 years ago I had a Tommy gun which was 10 times this size. I needed that truck to pull it, it was so big. And a couple years ago, I did use another machine mixer, very similar to this. The problem was, it was too big to get into the elevator. So we had to carry it up five, six guys up a flight of stairs, no fun. But worse than that, it was 220. We were blowing fuses left and right. I sent half the crew home the first day. The second day, a similar thing, so I thought, gee whiz. Let's just get through this day and no more of that stuff. But as I was talking to Danny, he said, well, Kirk, our machine runs on 110. Graco makes it. And you know who Graco is. And I thought, yeah, I've got a, an airless Graco paint sprayer for the last 30 years. Ugly as sin now because it's got paint all over it, but the quality's still there. It still pumps like new. So because it was Graco, I thought, hey, I'll give it a shot, man. And if we like it, um, I'll be happy to use it. You want me to review it? I'll give you my honest opinion. If we don't like it, guys, you will never see this video because often we do videos with products and if we don't like them, we just chuck the video. Um, maybe one out of 20. But for the sake of showing you guys, we're going to load up tonight. Me and Lou are going to lift this thing up. He says it's kind of light uh, versus the six men for the other similar machine. So let's load her up, Lou. All right. I'm going to get up here. You grab the back. Let's see, I'll give you the heavy part since you're stronger than me. We'll throw this guy on the truck. Uh, that ain't too bad. Uh, we're going to turn this, get it situated, then we're going to throw that out. We're going to throw the hoses on. And my buddy Andy, he's a great pump man. He'll pump it. Anyway, I just wanted to sh tell you a little bit about this because they called me and asked for us to review it. I appreciate that. I think that's kind of cool for somebody to ask our opinion. I'm flattered, you know, after eight years and 800 videos, that makes my day. Today, what we're gonna do is, we're gonna show you how to pump stucco onto a wall. We're gonna be using a Graco pump and we're gonna be using the product of Quickcrete. Quickcrete wrote the book on plastering and stucco products. They've been in business for years, 100 years probably. We're gonna match this finish right here. We'll just do a close up to show you and we'll show you how that's done when we get to the other side. All right, guys, we'll show you a little bit about uh, the pump and the uh, stucco that we're going to use. Uh, here's the mixer. This mis mixer uh, is pretty strong, very strong. How strong is it? With a hose and the air a hose hooked up to it. See the, see the house here. The height from the gable is 20 feet. This will pump upwards 60 feet. That is mighty strong. Uh, we, we used to use pumps back when I was union, and back then, a big Tommy gun, this is almost as strong as a big Tommy gun, and that's three times the size of this. Okay, what we have here is Graco's CM20. Now that is the mixer. You throw a bag on here, it, it uh, adds the water by itself, so you get a perfect mix every single time. Now the, the pump here, that's a pretty pump. Uh, State art, it actually reminds me of the movie we just saw, Alien, with that head like that, but this is one strong pump. Uh, hooked up properly, the hose, it's gonna shoot the mud on the wall, muck. Uh, you can call it whatever you want. It's gonna shoot the render, stucco, cement, plaster, all mean the same terminology. It's gonna shoot it out of here, and here's our air hose, and of course, it's electric. What is the beauty of this machine for us? and I had a few of these, it's 110, 110 electricity. I've had similar machines like this uh, that took 220. That's one of the best things for me about this. It's 110, everybody has 110. The setup, 110, 110, real easy. I'll show you another thing about this now. These, the bags here, they're Quickcrete, again. Um, these are 50 pound bags here, these are 80. Okay, now, 80 pound bags are kind of heavy and uh, I'm no spring chicken so that's heavy. 
Now these 50 pound bags, these are light. Why are they so much lighter? Polystyrene, that, that basically styrofoam coated with a cementitious product. You'll get the same volume with this 50 pound bag as you will with this 80 pound bag. So for us, we can use a machine to pump this or we can put it on by hand. The beauty of it is it's lightweight. It's like putting on whipping cream. If you're used to sand and cement, this product here makes it so much easier, especially when you're spreading it. You'll feel the difference. With these products, can we shoot 3 eighths of an inch for a scratch coat? Absolutely. Can we shoot 7 eighths one coat? Absolutely. Can we do the dash finish with this pump? Absolutely. We can do three separate dash finishes. The house is a dash finish. So once we do the base coat, we're going to let that set. Then we're going to turn right around, set it to a fine dash. And then this is called a knock down dash, technical word. It's kind of an easy finish. Looks difficult, but it's not. This will do a light dash, a medium dash, or even a heavy dash, which by the way, we have a big house about this size what we're going to do in about two to three weeks whenever they get their shear wall inspection and the, and the windows in. Now this, I'm looking forward to that. What we're doing here today, this is a small garage and it's kind of tough to get around it, but we're going to shoot it just to show you how to use this the best way we can. I got my buddy Andy Davis with Davis Stucco in the rear. The best gunman I know. He hasn't, he hasn't done it in quite a while, but it's kind of like riding a bike. Me to work behind a pump, I haven't worked behind a pump in a long time, but I already know I can do it because I used to do it 20 years ago, and it's like a bike. I, I'm looking forward to it, actually. It'll be fun. It's, instead of me putting it on by hand, I'll take, I'll take the Derby, and you'll shoot it on, and I'll just simply either go 3 eighths, or we'll just go one solid inch. And when I say inch, technically it's 7 eighths of an inch um, to show you how it's done. So, All right, guys. We're going to go seven eighths thick, one, one pass. Uh, just think of it as an inch pass minus an eighth. Stucco is usually seven eighths of an inch thick. All of our web screens, our grounds, our pieces of wood, everything is seven eighths of an inch. If you go an inch, what happens? Nothing. If you go an eighth inch under, what happens? Nothing. It's not a big deal. Now, what I'm doing is allowing Andy to get past me because if I jump right on him, I'm going to get it all over me. And if you look at his face, you'll see why I don't like to shoot a gun. I'll derby any day, but he's got mud on him. We used to have bandanas here, hats, you name it. We were fully protected and fully covered. But for the sake of this video, I'm not worried about it. I've had enough mud on me for the past 30 years. A little bit more ain't going to kill me. Okay, here I go. And with any, guys, with any same day material, you derby it or put it on once. You don't play with it because if you, if you play with it, you break the packs. And there are a lot of different materials, uh, pretty much all of the same in one aspect. Don't overmix and don't play with the stucco. Now, if, if I were to... play with it. That means I keep troweling it, keep troweling it with a trowel or with a derby or we overmix with a traditional mixer. It has a tendency to lose strength. So we don't want to we don't want to lose the pack with the mixer. That's why we're using the uh, the Graco pump and I don't want to overmix it myself. I go two to two to five passes. You're good two to five passes. Now, and then they put a cap on here, a flashing cap to protect the parapet. While I'm catching Andy, uh, I'll tell you a few things about uh, Graco. Graco's been in business a lot of years. I think since about 1940. They actually make the sprayers too. And their pumps in 1950, they started making all their airless pumps. Many car industries use their airless pumps. Why? 
because they are built of quality. So Graco's been around. They have the pump here that we're using, but they've been around. They're not just a new company. And as far as Quickcrete, what we're putting on right here, they've been around all for a long time also. Their engineers are top notch, so I'm comfortable using their products, very comfortable. If you go to Home Depot, Lowe's, or any of the mom and pop or the small hardware stores, you will see Quickcrete everywhere. Quickcrete is sold at all the professional material yards and it's sold at all the, all the stores, so you can't go wrong with Quickcrete. Okay, I'm allowing Andy to get way ahead of me. If I'm right on him, this is going to go on me. All right, guys, that's not bad for a fellow who hasn't shot a pump in a while. Andy, he is still doing a, a fabulous job. Me, I have a derby behind one, but it's like riding a bicycle, so I can do it. I barely broke a sweat, so uh, that just goes to show you how effortless this is. If I were to do how I've done in all 700 or so videos, We'd be sweating right now because you're taking it off a, a mud board, then you're putting it on, then you're darbying it too. So that pump kicks butt. So I like it. I like it right here. I'm coming. It's uh, a little bit shy, but that's okay. We can reach that from the ground. What I want to do, common sense thing says is, finish this right here, move the scaffold, then come back to the bottom because we can get the bottom by just standing on the ground. So I'm going to finish this piece right here. Boom. Boom. And of course, guys, this, this uh, system we're using here is great for contractors. You will get your money back quick. Uh, again, the amount of volume one can put on with the pump is amazing. Uh, that pump with four guys can do as much as 15 guys by hand. And All right, guys. This is one job. How do you guys comment on our video? You stay so clean. Because uh, I have to watch my clothes. But when you're doing behind a pump, I don't care. If you're a garbage man, if you try to stay clean, this won't happen. So, Now again, a lot, a lot relies on the pump man. Since Andy's the pump man, I can just relax. I've got a dart in the day to pump. Don't do this guy. So down on the bucket, I'm only doing it because I'm so near to the ground. And this is only a foot that I got to stretch. It's too much work for me to set all that stage right there. And besides, we're going to drop back and double that up anyway. Common sense guys on the job. Thank you. The jury's on the job. Oh, he turned around and got me. It's like being rained on. Fortunately, I don't mind getting a little bit. We're playing in the mud. And you see how Andy shoot that on. Shoot upward, guys, as we roll. If you shoot downward, the mud and the gravity pull it down, so always shoot upward. Once you get the tip, um, my buddy Ben Smith, you know, Danny Smith's class, and he's just retired after 40 something years in the trade. Why is it that somebody gets so much time in the trade, they become one of the best in the business and they retire? Yeah, it's just how it is bought a house in the country and he said, I'm done, I got 45 years in. But he can see a wall so well. Actually, Andrew hasn't used, used a pump in years and he's doing a great job. It's kind of like an, an elephant. He never forgets. All right, guys. The front of it, we show how to do one solid coat. Back here, we browned or we scratched it. You see, I got scratch marks over here if you want to 
come that way, you can see the scratch mark. And what we did is I went about three-eighths a half inch. Then we'll come back to double it. So we got the mud now, and this is called a back-to-back. And I got this trellis in my way, which makes my life uh, more exciting. Okay, so what I'm doing basically is I'm getting this right here. I'm going to rob Peter, pay Paul, rob Peter, pay Paul. And that just means we're not going to come back and set this up. So one more little bit of uh, mud, and there we go. Okay, so this we feather in. Not a big deal. All right, we feather that guy in. All right, so what I want to do is catch up to him. If I can squeeze through here, how Andy managed to squeeze through, I don't know. But if he can do it, I can do it. Yeah, baby. Yeah, baby. All right. That just goes to show you, even if you have obstacles, you can make it work if you know what you're doing. We know what we're doing. We just haven't done it in a while. Okay. Ah, tied up. This is what you call an obstacle course here. Nothing we can't handle. All right, guys, after you shoot your base coat on, what I do is to match the finish of the house there, which is a light knockdown dash, we bring some of the aggregate out. I can see the polystyrene coming out. That's great. That's perfect. That's just what we want. So we, we got a, a very light dash already. We're going to use the machine to dash. You want to hook up, Andy? Yeah. Uh, I personally think the machine, the setup, is well organized. The harmony, it presents both going into one. Never mind the colors match, but it, it's just a well-built <laughs> well machine. What do, you, what do you think, Andy? Uh, yeah, the, uh, the mixer, you can set the, uh, uh, the, the water volume on it and get your consistency just perfect. You don't have to uh, adjust each mix. It does it all by itself after you get it set up. So every mix is consistent. So when you're spraying, it's like, it's just perfect. Once you've, once you've got the consistency down, uh, it's, it's just, it's just go, go, go straight ahead. And I love, I love this piston assembly on this. Now we had an old Mako, you remember? <laughs> and it had, uh, <laughs> yeah. it had a stator, uh, and a worm drive. And it's, it's, uh, that's the system that it used to pump. It's a stator tube that has rubber in it. And then a stainless steel worm drive that pushed the, the mud through the, through the hose. But you could only use like a whip hose with that machine because it just didn't have enough force to push the mud through but this has this is like set up like a Tommy where it has a piston drive and this is only a single piston and it's got this this uh, the piston drive unit here is is like the the a ball and a manifold system in a Tommy gun and so the force and the drive and the power you can you can use two three hoses no problem and the PS I think it's like 600 pounds uh, uh, force coming through this thing so you can pump up to 60 feet uh, straight up with this machine and it will handle it so I really I really like that about this and this assembly comes apart really, really easily, and you clean it each time you use it, and you have access right to the pistons and right to the ball chambers to switch out the balls if you need to, so that your pressure is always, always maximum, and you've always got you got good speed out of the out of the machine and good efficiency, and it's just it's just and, a and great setup. And you could be the shooter because you're filthy, and yeah. I'm not. <laughs> The thing I didn't like with our Tommy is it took 14 men. It was a big, big gun. This only takes a few. What's the worst thing about trying to get 14 men to work in harmony? And try to get two, and you'll find out. Anyway, we're gonna, he's going to set this up. We're going to shoot a light dash over this. This has the ability 
you just turn this on here and this is just your settings this will shoot full speed for the brown and the scratch or you can turn it down and shoot a light dash so we want a light dash over the whole thing we'll just show you the front here because uh we're right here in the front we're ready to get out of here anyway so uh it's all yours brother thank you sir all right guys andy gets the fun job of uh shooting the dash on and if you if you look at their house, they got a very light dash. What is a very light dash? That means this has many settings for the dash. He's doing a very light dash. And then what I do is I come back with a, a trowel, and I always wet a trowel. You wet the trowel, I'm using a swimming pool trowel, and you hit it very lightly, just no pressure at all, and that's what gives it a knockdown dash. So I'm going to knock it down right now. Uh, of course, I'm gonna wait for I knock it down so that he doesn't, so, so he doesn't spray me. Uh, all right. Yeah, it is kind of wet. Uh, well, that's good. You gotta have some moisture in this when shooting a, a light dash because any dash finish is is three times as four, five times as soupy as when you hand apply the base coat. So. I'm going to stay out of that picture because I don't want to get full of stucco. Now, it's Carl's birthday today, so his birthday present is he gets to get up on the roof and make sure none gets on that roof, even though they're going to replace that roof. So, uh, I'll let him finish that. And, okay, and here's what I'm going to do, guys. Now, notice, if I press hard... I'm gonna, it's gonna uh, push it in. I won't have my knockdown dash. Barely grab it. Barely grab it and, and you just barely touch it. Like, like a surgeon right here, guys. Uh, okay, let's try that. Barely anything, guys, because they don't have a heavy knockdown dash. They have a super light knockdown dash. And a super light knockdown dash takes a good eye. You just, uh, boom, and there it is. And here's something about a dash finish and a skip trial finish. What is it about a dash finish and a skip trial finish? Both of them are very forgiving. Did we need to do a perfect finish? No, we didn't because these finishes here are very forgiving. And uh, with Quickcrete's uh, added polystyrene, perfect, because sometimes we used to put perlite or vermiculite in the buckets of mud because it, it gave it this appearance, it was light, it would shoot out, whereas if you put too much sand, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't give it this boldness. We want boldness, and we got the boldness, so we just take it, and again, a very light hand. It's just been shot on, so you, you hit it too soon. Is not a good idea so don't do that don't hit it too soon give it time and it takes a little bit of practice so that's just perfect with with this material you know, the whole thing about being a good plaster guys is know your material if you know all or most of the materials you got 70 percent right there the applications is just another 30. Anyway, guys, we appreciate you watching. I'm glad to have my buddy Andy Davis with Davis Stucco, a 30-plus stucco man, 30-year-plus stucco guy, and myself uh, um, more than 30 years. And between us both, uh, he's got a lot of years because he is, he's just as good as me. All right, guys, we're going to show you the completion of this job. There you go. That's knockdown dash. You dash it and you knock it down. Any job you do, it doesn't matter which tools you're showing, working with, as long as they're efficient and they work, and you clean up after yourself, guys. Uh, a fellow called me and says, hey, gee, Kirk, aren't you worried about product placement? And I had to Google that and think, what the heck is product placement? And it's, it meant um, showing products and using them, and I thought, why would I be worried about that? We only show products that are effective, and the folks we... Show them for when they call me and say, gee, Kirk, like uh, Quickrete or Graco, and say, you want to show our product? It's like, sure, sure. I'm very familiar with their products. So we don't mind 
uh, cooperating with folks. Um, we're a positive channel, so any product we use, I've used before. If I haven't used it before or I think it's a, a useless product, we simply don't do it and then say, gee whiz, this product sucks. We just don't use it. Uh, that's, that's what I think of product placement. Uh, any products that are great and have longevity have been tried and tested for years and years, we don't mind working with folks and showing it. So anyway, there's the final completion. Watch that deck, Carl. Don't fall through it on your birthday. Anyway, we thank you folks for watching. And as usual, live long and plaster. By the way, folks, my dad and I are now members of Amazon Affiliates. So if you're looking to buy any of the plastering or construction tools you've seen in our videos and you want to support us in the process, you can check the links below our video or you can go to our website and get them there. If you have any other questions that for tools we don't have linked, email us direct and we'll respond to you then. Once again, folks, we thank you for watching and I really enjoy all your comments. If you guys like this video, please click the like button down below. And also, if you enjoy what we do, subscribe to our channel so we can keep making these videos for you. My name is Kirk. And Jay. We thank you for watching. And from the entire Giordano family, we'll, we'll see you on the next one.